So this is my story, guys. So in 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was diagnosed with not one cancer, but two uh, blood cancers, Hodgkin's lymphoma and multiple myeloma. And they were directly related to the stress of the job as a part of that stress of life, the stress of the job. And I was, um, as many of you know, I was a nonprofit CEO and worked in a nonprofit industry for 20, over 20 plus years. I was a CEO of my organization for the last 15 years, took my organization from $750,000 to a $2.5 million budget within an eight-year time uh, period, uh, completed a $12 million capital campaign. I was successful, but this all came at a cost. And so as I was laying in the hospital bed in 2019, undergoing a stem cell transplant, I made a vow that I did not want anyone else to go through the struggle that I went through. And that's why I created my company, Supporting World Hope. And as a part of um, my mission is to provide as many free resources that I can and low um, cost resources that I can. And not only that, is to every month in January, every, every year in January, to bring nonprofit professionals something on self-care. Because I was one of those people, when you talked about self-care and making time for self-care, I was one of those people who rolled my eyes. I was like, oh, here we go with that woo-woo stuff. And ain't nobody got time for that. But I'm going to tell you, by taking on that attitude, you you will pay for it. And so I don't want anyone else to to have to go through that experience. So I surround myself with great people like Miss Irma Burr, who has been so patiently trying to teach me and guide me along the way. And she's so good at what she does. And I'm going to basically be quiet and allow Miss Irma to have the focus because she was one of the few people that I wanted to spend my birthday with and with you guys. So for my 50, 50 second time around the earth, I want to hear this message. And so my word for 2023 is a repeat word because I didn't do good with it last year. Miss Emma tried to help me was mindfulness. So I'm going to stop talking and I am going to let Miss Irma have the floor. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your beautiful words. And I, um, I'm so honored to be, to be here and to share what I'm going to share today. And, um, I just want to, to say and to remind you all that life is full of it's full and beautiful, no matter what mess is going around us. And, and when we can understand that, we start making changes. So I have not always been in this Zen thing. And, and to be honest, I can be in Zen, but I can go and have all the mess going on. But when you have the tools, you come back to where you know is your truth. So back when the pandemic started, I, I am, I was going to go to, to my country, El Salvador, and they told me you can't come because things are getting bad. And so my mother was still alive and she was turning one, a uh, hundred years old. And so I couldn't be there. And uh, a couple of weeks after on, on uh, Easter Sunday, she passed. And, and it was chaos because I was here. She was there. Funerals and stuff was just uh, very demanding as to how you had to do the procedures. And, and so I did everything online funeral, everything. And, you know, when you go through grief and loss, you start feeling this, this kind of stress. And I was really stressed. And having a history uh, of breast cancer, 
I, I started feeling very overwhelmed. And, and, and I know that stress is not good for your immune system. And I was just having panic attacks because I said, COVID is coming. I'm so stressed. The immune system is going to go down and I'm going to get sick. So, uh, having been bombarded by all that, I started losing my spark. I was just going under and I, I, I had the tools. So I started getting more into this mindfulness and over trying to use the tools for overcoming my anxiety. And, and it was through the tools that I'm going to share with you that I was able to, to go back to, to that state of, of balance and, and not feeling this, uh, overwhelmed. So I started having that peacefulness and feeling more focused on how I, what I needed to do. So going back to this, uh, losing your spark, I, I, I want to come with the, the, a quote by Oprah and, and, uh, it is, you have to find what sparks light in you so that you in your own way can illuminate the world. And that really got me because it was, it was in that moment that I said, I'm here to serve. I, I cannot be in this chaos. So, uh, I, I got more into my tools. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Irma Burr. And I'm a mindfulness meditation coach. And I have learned all these woo-woo that like <laughs> Sabrina says, which are not, because they there's enough research that has proven that these tools are are have done the results, you know. That's that why we say meditation is your medication. Mindful mindfulness is your tool to overcome anxiety. And, and so I, I really, uh, think that using a holistic approach and, and putting all these, uh, different interventions is, uh, one way to, to start healing and, and feeling better from the body, the mind and the spirit. So what happens when we lose our, our joy is that we lose our strength. How many of you agree with that? If you can put a one on the chat, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to see it, but no. Okay. So anyway, but we can do answer questions afterwards. But, uh, so when we lose our joy and, and we lose our strength, we start seeking for more meaningful life. We start uh, feeling and going in that overwhelm. We start feeling uh, not focused, chaos. And and so we might also try to get busier. You know, we try to be more on the to-do list. And and so we we feel lost. We feel unsure of who we are anymore. And, and what's really important for us. So being in this, um, like most of us are, you know, in this nonprofit and caring and doing for others, uh, when we start feeling this way, we cannot give anymore. So when we are feeling st stuck, we cannot grow and in we need to become curious again and, and start filling our, our, our bowl with more positive things and more, uh, things that are going to nourish and nurture us. So yes, uh, as Sabrina mentioned, you, you know, it's self care and self love. And we have February that's it's love and, and all this, but is it only these months or what? 
So when you start doing the practices, you start retraining your brain so that if, uh, if a, something, an event comes, then you know that that shall pass. You're not going to focus on it and you start using the, the tools to be, to be able to jump and, and close that gap that separates you from who you really are. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about these keys, which I have uh, labeled or named them the the three M&Ms, okay? So um, I know you won't forget because most of us like M&Ms. So it's, it's going to be something that you're going to bring it to your awareness. I need to do it. So when the first the first one is about movement. So what happens uh, with movement when we lose our spark and we feel kind of gloomy? Our energy levels are very low. So one of the things is to move and it is not, you know, most of us, we do these at the beginning of the year, things that, yes, I'm gonna hit the gym and I'm gonna exercise and I'm gonna do all this. Well, you don't, you don't hit the gym every single day or do. And so you start feeling the overwhelm. Yes, I never do things right. You know, overwhelm of thoughts and overwhelm of many things. But what if, you know, you did movement sitting down, you know, or, or even just three minutes every hour, you don't have to hit the gym. So I'm going to share with you, uh, I cannot do yoga here, but, you know, of course, yoga is one of the, the very subtle and very gentle moves that I teach, movement that I teach, but also uh, there's other mindful movements that we can do. So the first one is, is just to, and I won't stand up, but if, even if you're sitting, if you bring your arms a little bit more here, you know, you can, you can start moving, you know, just doing this. So, so what happens, you know, you're just, and if you're standing up, the, the, the thing is to, to be, without without shoes to feel your feet grounded you you keep on keep moving and then speed it up speed it up speed it up yes we start speeding it up and so just to stop right now you feel it right you feel a little bit of movement you know there's some hormones coming in there and then the uh the other one is to bounce, you know, I, I I won't stand up, stand up. But if you come up and down on your toes and just bounce, this is kind of a reset on your on your body. And and those are very simple movements. If you're sitting on a chair uh, and you are able to do some yoga moves, you know, you can sit on the edge of the chair, bring the right hand to the back of the chair, left hand goes on your on your uh, right leg and you just twist and you breathe in here. You inhale and exhale through the nose. And then of course we do the other side because we don't wanna be crooked. So you turn to the other side and do the same thing. And, and, um, one of the things I suggest with movement is that it's so important to do movement because you tune in to your body. And one of the best things to release all those, uh, negative thoughts and negative energy is to tune in to your, to your body. And so movement and mindfulness and is going to tune you in. If you tune into your body when an emotion comes, then you will be able 
to, to feel that emotion in your body and, and kind of become aware of it and then take another action. So as we move from movement <laughs> to the next part, which is mindfulness, I just want to end uh, the movement with uh, five little things. It's first is to pick an activity that you enjoy. You're not going to go to CrossFit or to the gym if you really don't enjoy it. So you have to really enjoy it. If it's dancing with your with your broom while you clean, if it's doing belly dancing, if it's uh, if it's just going for a walk with your dog, it's that's fine. And take a few simple steps. Don't put in there that you're going to exercise every day for an hour. It only takes 15 minutes to do mindful movements and to get that body going. You don't need to, to go kill yourself <laughs> exercising for an hour. And there you are that instead your body hurts and then the next day you don't go because it's still hurting and the next day. So it becomes a, a little circle. So it's about setting smart goals. And, and if you can have a buddy, then have a buddy. Uh, and what I say, uh, doing the pauses during the day is going to help you. If you set up to move every hour, you will, and you will look forward to it okay so we had started with mindfulness a little bit about uh you know bringing and, and embracing so most people uh, when when we're having angers or we're sad people tell us oh don't be sad or don't be angry angry and why not <laughs> if i'm if I'm angry, I'm angry. If I'm pissed off, I'm pissed off. And don't tell me not to. So so this is where mindfulness comes. Embrace your feeling, your emotion. It is there. It's a reality. You don't hide it. Because if you hide it, then it starts accumulating. And if we accumulate emotions, they turn out to be either uh, into come into anxiety or depression. So we don't want to do that. We want to use uh, this uh, mindfulness tool of embracing the feeling. And where is it that I'm feeling that anger? Is it in my heart? Is it in my tummy? Is it in my hands that I feel like punching somebody? So, So where am I feeling it? And once you connect to that, you start breathing. So the breath, when you're connecting into mindfulness. So, so what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is being in the present moment, becoming aware of what's happening right now. It's not happening yesterday. So it's right now. So what connects us more better than our breath? We don't breathe yesterday. We didn't breathe. We, we don't breathe yesterday or tomorrow. We breathe in the moment. And so what, what, what we do with the breath and it becomes a more conscious breath. And so you inhale one and exhale two. Inhale one and exhale two. So when we're becoming more conscious of that breath, your anger is going to start coming down. And then the action, which might have been to go punch somebody is going to Settle a little bit, and then you're going to to go more to a kinder action that can be, you know what? I'm going to wait till my anger goes, and I'm going to talk to that person, or I'm going to go write in my journal and just cuss and everything that I need to do, and then tear that paper and don't show it to anybody. So... So when we start seeing our emotions and, and kind of going into them, that's your mindfulness. You're going to feel calmer, more collected, and more present in the moment. So what I suggest, again, just like your movement, remember that we want to retrain our brain. We want 
to make this like a little routine. So take some time during the day of your busy schedules uh, to practice mindfulness. So I'm going to give you one uh, little uh, thing that is fun. So let's go back. If any, if many, if you have watched the movie The Karate Kid, so Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi was training, uh, was training the the kid to go and compete for for karate. But he didn't understand why Mr. Miyagi was, whoo, I lost power. <laughs> woo. Anyway, uh, Mr. Miyagi was, had him to go wash the car. And it was wash in and wash out. And the kid didn't understand. Well, that's mindfulness. Okay. Wash in and wash out. And so when you're eating, practice mindfulness. If you put a little a blueberry in your mouth, I tell you, I don't know what's going on. I'm sparkling again. <laughs> so, uh, so when you put a blueberry in your mouth, don't bite it. Taste it. Move it with your tongue. Feel the, the blueberry. Give it a little bite. Feel the, the, the juices coming out. Chew it and then swallow it. When you're brushing your teeth, brush in and brush out. You know, just brushing your teeth. Feel the water in your mouth. Feel the, the toothpaste. Feel how does it feel when you put the water, when you spit the water. So becoming mindful. Mindful when you're eating, mindful when you're walking, and take the moments in mindfulness. Mindfulness is just observing the present moment. So I'm talking on the phone. So why did I do that doodle? Oh, I don't know. But, you know, being mindful of what's happening in the moment. And, and that is the easiest way that I can put mindfulness. But what what I feel more with the mindfulness is that there's no excuse. You can do it anywhere. You don't need anything. You know, it's just being aware in the present moment of what's going on with your body and your sensations. So that's your second M&M. &M. So are you, I hope you're enjoying those. So movement, mindfulness, and uh when we move to, to the third one is meditation. And all I can say is that if you can worry, you can meditate. It's the same thing. When you're worrying, you're focused on the same thing. I am not worth it. I am just, I was going to say that word, but no, I am just, because that's what I tell myself <laughs> sometimes. But it's it's about putting all these negative things and 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 the worries. Oh, I won't be able to do this, or these these things are going to happen. So you're focused on something. Well, when you're meditating, you're focused on a feeling of uh, or on your breath. So it's the same thing. So, oh, but I cannot be still. You don't, who says you have to be still when you're meditating? Oh, I want to be in OM and just be there without moving. No, you can meditate and you can sway and you can caress your face and you can, can just do a little massage. You don't need to sit in an easy cross-legged position. You can extend your legs. You can sit in a chair. You can sit on the couch. The only thing I don't recommend is to sleep, to, to lay down because you're going to fall asleep. And because remember, all these tools are about 
getting that energy, moving that energy. If you're laying down, the, the energy is not flowing as easy as when you're sitting down. So you can sit in a chair, you can sway. Uh, it's, it's good to, to, to uh, stay away from any input, like don't be listening to, to rock music or with your computer on or anything. It's stillness. It's, when we say moments of stillness is let go of the busyness of your mind and of your moment and find that stillness. And people ask me, well, do we have to have a, a little altar? Do we have to have a special scarf? If you want to do all of that, you know, if that's going to make a little special space, do that. But you can sit on a bench and watch your dog doing something, and that's meditation. You can sit and just watch children playing, and that's meditation. You can watch the birds. You can watch the ocean. You can. You don't have to have a special place. Yes, we tend to to have all those specialties because it nurtures us. It makes it more special. And when we're meditating, it's 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 not about uh, just falling asleep and relaxing. Yes. Meditation can bring you or can encompass the relaxation, but most importantly, meditation is about life. And, and what happens is that when you're in stillness, your brain starts working in another way and you develop and activate certain glands, like your wisdom, that knowingness cannot be activated if you're always worrying. Because you won't trust it. You won't trust that inner voice that tells you, you better not do that, <laughs> you know, or yeah, this is the right thing. So, so when you don't listen, when you're not able to listen is when you're in chaos. But when you start calming the mind and you know that there's that knowingness, there's the pituitary gland that's in the in the middle of your corpus callosum, which is your brain, and that is activated when you are in the silence, when you are in in that contemplation, contemplation of your breath, contemplation of of your sweetness, of your kindness. And we don't take that time. We're always telling ourselves so many ugly things. So mindfulness is going to get rid of that of that mind talk and the mindset. And then uh, meditation is just going to give you uh, a, a different uh, thing. Now, do we say, uh, so these are some of the questions that come with meditation and, and it's, uh, oh, is it uh, that I'm going to be, meditation is not religious, it's nothing to do Prayer is different. When we're praying, we're just having a conversation with our source. We're just saying, you know what? I really screwed up, but you know, I need your guidance. Just guide me, send me messages, send me. But if you don't have the meditative mind, you won't listen. You won't see the messages. You're going to be hoping that voodoo happens and things are going to change they're not going to change and 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 that's one of the things why why doing those vision boards and manifestation doesn't work because you put all those things and you paste and you have all these wonderful things but what is the feeling how do you feel about it and the feeling and the why why do i want that house why do I want to have all this fortune? And it is only when you bring it to that energy of service that it will, it will happen. So the same thing is with the meditation. If you don't have that silence within you, you won't listen to the messages or the guidance that you're going to get from your prayers. 
And so what meditation, again, can give you a sense of calm, of peace, of balance, and that can um, can benefit your emotional well-being and your overall health. So, so when you start, and there's uh, the benefits are these, but there's a lot of studies that have have proven of how people who meditate, people who are happy and joyful are able to to uh, overcome pain and many other things than people who don't. And, and when we have uh, whatever illnesses or whatever disease we we come in, in uh, that is a challenge for us, when we find this stillness, when we find this movement and when we find this mindfulness, it's what's going to heal. Now, during my year and a half of of my cancer journey, I did all this. So people, well, one of one of the things was that I had to dive into becoming vegan. So I said, I, this is it, because the only person that I could get that was a chef that could help me with with uh, my lifestyle, she was vegan. And she says, you know, I can help you, but you have to become vegan. And so she did uh, some kind of detoxing and little other things. So when I started it, I cried because not because I was eating vegetables, but because I didn't know because there were certain procedure to do the things because it was healing. It wasn't only I'm going to become, no, there was detoxing of, of the blood. So I had to do it. But did I want to do it? Did I had self-discipline to do it? Yes, because I didn't want to do any any other thing. And so when when she asked me to chew my food 37 times before I swallowed, I used to count it, one, two, three, four. But then I started using mindfulness. I started tasting my food, dancing it in my mouth, uh, and and then it become very automatic that I wasn't going to eat in the car because I couldn't or eat in a very hurried way. And, and the movement, I had already started Orange Theory, which is very intense. That gym is very intense. I didn't stop. I never did stop. It motivated me. I made friends. They pampered me. They, whenever I was in my detox thing, they modified my, my routines. So you can do it. If you're willing to change and move from overwhelm, from all this that is not allowing your to spark, to be uh, loving, then you need to do all these things to feel focused, to feel positive, and to be there to serve. You cannot serve from an empty pot. So uh, I I want to take you into do so that you can understand a little bit about mindfulness. We do have time, so I want to show you a little a little exercise with mindfulness, and then we're going to end with a little short uh, meditation so you can feel the difference. So meditation have has different uh, ways of doing it. It's visualization, and it's through guided meditation where people are talking to you and guiding you all the way. And also through mindfulness meditation it's a form of of coming to the present moment meditation it is also coming to the present moment but there's many ways and in one of the things is do not 
start. Oh, I'm going to do 30 minutes of meditation. You can't start with two minutes. Just breathe. So I want to give you that if you can do it with me, you'll be able to do it on your own. So one of my teachers, because uh, when I started all this, I became a mindfulness-based uh, um, mindfully based stress release method by uh, by John uh, Cabot Zinn, and and so uh, he was one of my teachers. But one of the of uh, my loving teachers was was Thich Nhat Han, this monk from Vietnam, and he passed uh, a year ago in January. But he he had uh, one of the meditations I started with was the sound of the bell. And when I started listening to it, I felt, hey, this is so boring. What do I need to hear a bell for? And so it was uh, inhaling, I hear the sound of the bell. <laughs> and exhaling, and so he kept giving us all these different prompts. So I want to take you to to a very short one, and um, it's called it's about touching and connecting. Okay, remember all of this comes from connection. You cannot feel focused, calm, and positive if you're not connected. So uh, you can sit nice and tall. And if you feel like closing your eyes, you can close your eyes. If not, just just uh, lower your gaze to the floor. Make sure that both feet are, if you're sitting down, that both feet are on the ground or on the floor. So let's start. Aware of the hair on my head, I breathe in through your nose. Smiling, smile to the hair on my head. I breathe out. Exhale through the nose. Aware of my eyes. I breathe in. Smiling to my eyes. I breathe out. Aware of my ears. I breathe in. Smiling to my ears. I breathe out. Aware of my teeth. I breathe in. Smiling to my teeth, I breathe out. Aware of my shoulders, I breathe in. Smiling to my shoulders, I breathe out. Aware of my arms, I breathe in. Smiling to my arms, I breathe out. Aware of my lungs, I breathe in. Smiling to my lungs, I breathe out. Aware of my heart, I breathe in. Smiling to my heart, I breathe out. Aware of my liver, I breathe in. Smiling to my liver, I breathe out. Aware of my kidneys, I breathe in. Smiling to my kidneys, I breathe out. Aware of my feet, I breathe in. Smiling to my feet, I breathe out. Aware of my toes, I breathe in. And smiling to my toes, I breathe out. So this helps to become more attuned to your body. The in-breath is to touch a certain part of your body. And you can modify this. And, and the out-breath smiles to that part of the body so that gives you that that softness and that gratitude for your body so this is a very simple way but you know it, it mindfulness can be as you're eating eating i savor my my mashed potato i it's it's during eating it's while you're bathing you know just just we tend to not really touch ourselves with with anything, you know, so, so that's one of the things that I recommend. And so remember, take a break every so often during your day. 
to do mindfulness. And so now for, for meditation, uh, one of the, of the things to, to, you will have thoughts. You can't get rid of the thoughts, but when you count your breath, when you focus on your breath, you're able to, to allow the, the thoughts to be just like a cloud. They come and they pass. Okay. There's a difference if I have a thought and I start stirring the thought, then I lost it. But having thoughts during meditation, it's okay. So don't stop meditating because you have thoughts or because you can't sit still because you can't, you don't have to let go of all of that. Okay. So again, let's close our eyes. Allow your hands to to be freely, uh, whether they're facing down or facing up on your knees. And remember to have both, do not sit with them crossing your legs, just allow the feet because meditation is about keeping us grounded, okay? So I am going to, to repeat in, um, two words that are like your centering words for for the meditation and it is i am although in sanskrit which is the language that we use a lot in yoga it's called so hum so so is the sound that we make as we inhale so inhale and you'll hear that sound through the nose so and then as you exhale you'll hear the sound hum exhale through the nose and do it again. Inhale so. Exhale hum. When you're doing it, you don't say the words. You just do it mentally. But today I am going to say the words. And as I say so, you're going to inhale. And as I say hum, you're going to exhale. Try to make that exhalation a little bit longer uh, than your inhalation. And, and, or, you know, it's also, uh, this means I am. So hum means, although it's easier to relate it with the Sanskrit because it's the sound of your breath. Okay. So sitting in a comfortable position, allow your, your shoulders to drop, to relax. Allow your neck to be comfortable and relaxed. And let's start by inhaling at the count of three. So sipping one, two, three. And then exhale through the mouth, just letting go. Ah. Inhale again at the count of three. And then exhale again. Through the mouth, just allowing things to let go. And then I want you to breathe from your belly. So you're going to inhale, belly expands. And then another sip of breath. Bring the breath to your chest. And then exhale very slowly through the nose. Inhale to the belly, to the chest, and exhale very slowly. And now I'm just going to keep you two minutes. Okay, we're going to inhale when I say so through the nose and exhale hum. I'll mention it, you just do it. So, hum. So, hum. So, hum. So, 
so hum so hum so hum so hum so hum Completely exhale so hum and give yourself a hug by crossing your arms Hold your shoulders and continue with a no regular breath. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. And you usually close your meditation with gratefulness and just sharing what you have cultivated with others. So. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be at peace. And release, you can open your eyes. And I want to end it by saying that it's your time to create, to love, and to live the life that you want. So give back to yourself all that you can by taking the time every day to use these things to connect and, and be aligned with who you are and to be able to live with intention and purpose. Because if you want to show up as the best version of who you are, you need to take little steps and little actions that will bring you to that. You cannot be scattered. You cannot be overdoing. If you want to be that best version, when we want to be that, we will take action. So things won't happen just like that or with this little talk that we just had. You need to start tomorrow with the little practices. What we did right now, you can do it in 15 minutes. Do it first thing in the morning and it will set your day. So no excuses. And if you screw up, well, yeah, there's always a, a moment to start all over again. But don't make it to where you didn't do it today. Well, I won't do it. I, I'm a mess. No. Whenever you feel yourself that way, go into mindfulness and change that mindset. So I want to thank you for having me here. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Irma Burr, or, or Colibri Discoveries is the name of my of my business where I help uh, beautiful people to discover their inner radiance and sparkle again. And uh, also on Instagram, Irma Mind Body Interventions and Colibri Discoveries. And just, uh, I, I do courses, I teach yoga, I do sound harmonizations, and now I've been doing drumming with shamanic drumming. And so I use a lot of alternative to, to bring this spark. So follow me. And if you have any questions or are curious, remember doing this is about awakening that curiosity of my upcoming courses or little events. Just uh, send me a message or follow me. So. Thank you so much, and uh, may you have a wonderful day, and remember, you are here to serve, and in order to serve, you just have to have that joy and have that positive and 
that radiance that sparks. So thank, thank you. you.